the Z06. This alphanumeric string of characters represents some of the best track-oriented Corvettes ever made. Even from 1963 to present day, the Z06 RPO code has introduced cutting-edge technology, world-class track performance, and an attainable package unlike its European counterparts. What has been most interesting of the Z06 line is their engines, modified versions of the standard offerings, but with higher output, higher red lines, and some of the best sounding V8s to ever grace this planet. Today on Explain, we will take a deep dive into the heart of the Z06 and why it was and still is the best Corvette model. This story actually starts in 1957 when the Automotive Manufacturers Association implemented a racing ban that stopped GM from participating in SCCA racing events. Zora Duntov, known as the father of the Corvette, was determined to provide customers with the ability to buy a race-ready Corvette that could be tracked but also used as a weekend cruiser. To get around the ban, Duntov and his colleagues created the RPO Z06 as a special performance equipment package for the Corvette Stingray. The Z06 option was an additional $1,818.45, which is $17,000 in today's money on top of a 327 fuel E4 speed Stingray. The power plant was an L84 327 cubic inch V8 with a mechanical Rochester fuel injection. Over the standard 327, it featured a forged steel crankshaft, domed pistons which helped bump the compression to 11.25 to 1 versus the 10.5 to 1 in the base 327. It had better flowing cylinder head ports and combined with the Duntov 097 cam made a whopping 360 horsepower in 1963. Made it to the four-speed manual, they could sprint to 60 miles an hour in 5.8 seconds and top out at 130 miles per hour. The Z06 package also received better brakes, heavy-duty front stabilizer bar, stronger shocks, much stiffer springs, with an optional 36 and a half gallon fuel tank. This was a one-year car option, and Chevy only produced 199 of these Z06s. The Z06 RPO would go silent for 38 years, not until the C5 Corvette Z06. Chief Corvette engineer David Hill wasn't satisfied with the current performance aspect of the C5 Corvette. So for the track-focused C5 Corvette, the Z06 name was resurrected to honor Zora Duntov in previous 1963 Z06. Chevy engineers developed a new power plant for the new flagship Corvette, which carried the engine designation LS6. This improved over the LS1 offered in the Basie 5 with a higher flowing 243 cylinder head with stronger valve springs to handle high RPM. The compression bumped the 2.5 to 1 over the 10.2 to 1 in the LS1, had a revised intake manifold and Z06 specific camshaft grind with more valve lift and duration, and the first year output was 385 horsepower and the next year bumped all the way up to 405 horsepower with an even more aggressive camshaft grind. Upgrades of the Z06 would even trickle down into the Camaro and Firebird, getting the LS6 intake manifold in 2001 and 2002. The C5 Z06 was only offered in the FRC, or fixed roof coupe configuration, which was the lightest at the time, and combined with the titanium exhaust and lightweight battery of the Z06, it was 117 pounds lighter than the base model. To further solidify the racing prowess of the C5, they would win first and second place in the 2001 24 hour of Le Mans GTS class. The Z06 nameplate took a one year hiatus as a newer C6 generation was introduced and in 2006 the C6 Z06 took what was learned on the C5 and turned it up to 11. The C6 Z06 is the first time you see an all aluminum frame with a magnesium front subframe making it extremely light. The power plant was all new, unlike the C5 Z06 which received a hot rodded LS1 known as the LS6, the LS7 in the C6 was a bespoke engine block that displaced 427 cubic inches or 7 liters. The internals were a forged crankshaft with a 4 inch stroke, flat top forged pistons which helped push 11 to 1 compression ratio and the use of tight titanium, which is very expensive to manufacture and can be found in the connecting rods and intake valves. One of the keys to the LS7 is the CNC machined intake ports on the cylinder heads, which gave excellent flow paired with the LS7 specific camshaft and intake manifold. Final output was 505 horsepower, which was 100 horsepower naturally aspirated over the C5 Z06. <laughs> while still retaining the same overall weight. 
Since the Z06 was purpose built as a track car, the introduction of a new racing inspired dry sum oiling system was introduced. Many still consider the LS7 C6 Z06 to still be the ultimate front engine Corvette. In 2009, GM went a step further with the introduction of the ZR1, which is the first time you see the Z06 and ZR1 available at the same time. The ZR1 received a 6.2 liter supercharged LS9, making a whopping 638 horsepower, which when compared to the two, the ZR1 was objectively faster. But in a road course setting, the Z06 was lighter, it didn't heat soak after multiple laps, and came in at a drastically lower price point. You got 98% of the ZR1's track performance for almost half the price, which even to this day, the C6 Z06 puts up impressive lap times. In 2014, the newly redesigned C7 Corvette was introduced and the Z06 variant was missing while still being in development and finally dropped the next year. Chief Corvette engineer Tad Euster's perspective on the C7 Z06 was that the upper limits of performance were more accessible than the previous Z06 models. This Z06 introduced the supercharged LT4, which was a departure from the naturally aspirated Z06s of the prior generations. Displacement dropped to 6.2 liters, but with the addition of a R1740 TVS 1.7 liter supercharger, making nine and a half pounds of boost. The engine is only one inch taller than the naturally aspirated LT1, and like both engines are direct injected, with the LT4 having a 10 to one compression ratio. The LT4 has a fully forged rotating assembly with the block strengthening with gussets around the cylinder head bolts and a rotocast cylinder head to handle the cylinder pressures of the supercharged 6.2 liter. Output was 650 horsepower, which made it at the time more powerful than the ZR1 of the previous generation. Also for the first time, you saw the option in a Z06 of an automatic transmission, which included active fuel management, which helped improve fuel economy in low engine load situations. The C7 Z06 would pave the way for the later 2019 C7 ZR1 with the LT5 engine and more aggressive track prowess. Many people still consider the C7 Z06 the best bang for your buck track slash street vehicle with used prices in the $60,000 to $70,000 range and can wipe six-figure exotics around the racetrack. Even with the C7 Z06 being a departure from the traditional Z06 formula, since it was offered with an automatic and convertible variant, the next generation Z06 would go an even further ways away from the traditional Z06. The C8 Z06 is the crescendo of naturally aspirated Corvettes, featuring the world's most powerful naturally aspirated V8 and a road car nicknamed the LT6. The only similarities to the older engines is the 4.4 inch bore spacing. The crankshaft is a flat plane design which counterweights are lighter and the rotating inertia is significantly reduced. The crankshaft is forged with titanium connecting rods and CP Carrillo pistons that produce 12 and a half to one compression which is insane for a road car. Gone is the pushrod valve train for a dual overhead cam design transplanted from the C8R race car, which last time dual overhead cam was used on a Corvette was in the C4 ZR1. The intake manifold design allows for 110% volumetric efficiency, which is like supercharging, but without the supercharger. This all culminates to 670 horsepower at 8400 RPM that stands as a new record for naturally aspirated V8 engines. Made it to a 10 speed dual clutch, this will likely be the fastest track car ever produced by GM, eclipsing the C7 ZR1. 60 years later, after Duntov's original proof of concept, the Z06 nameplate still lives on and continuing to destroy exotics for a fraction of the price. If you can get it for him, SRP.